Welcome to Electron Online and here we have a brand new set of videos for you dealing with chemistry and in particular what we're going to talk about in this one right here and many to follow is the actual structure of molecules. So we're going to start out with going through all the various basic shapes and then we're going to try and find out a system on how to figure out what actual molecules should look like for various reasons. And the key, and I have it right here, the key to this whole concept, the whole understanding, is the electron repulsion forces. The repulsive forces between the electrons, both the electrons that are being used in the bonding between the atoms, and also the free electron pairs which are not being used in bonding, they repel one another as well. They, uh, they exist in orbitals, and so these orbital shapes tend to repel each other, and they repel the bonds between the atoms, and it's those forces that really determine the actual shape of the atoms. So we're going to step through these in a very systematic way. We're going to start off with, number one, the basic shape, the linear shape, and of course, all diatomic molecules, molecules that have two atoms, are linear in shape. And here I have an example of that. Um, somebody uh, has my chemistry set. We lend it out. We never got it back yet. I ordered a new one, but until we have the new one, I had to uh, kind of dig into my kids' magnetic sets. Kind of neat. Uh, these do represent bonds, and here are the atoms, so this works pretty well. Um, anyway, so here's an example of a diatomic molecule, two atoms and two electrons bonding together. Sometimes you can have a double bond or triple bond, but in this case we'll just show you a single bond. As an example, uh, HCl, hydrochloric acid, it does form a simple bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine, so they each share a pair of electrons, so it looks like this. We usually write the, the shared pair like a single line like that to represent the bond between the two atoms like that. And then notice there are three pairs of free electrons still along the chlorine. The sharing is not even. If it was even, then the two electrons would spend just as much time around the hydrogen as they do around the chlorine, but that's not really the case in reality. The two shared electrons spend more their time with chlorine than do with hydrogen, so as a whole, this, this molecule tends to be polar in nature, a little bit more negative towards the chlorine side, a little bit more positive towards the, uh, the hydrogen side. And the ratio, uh, so this is like an ionic bond, and uh, the ratio of how much time they spend each other depends on the electronegativity of, uh, of the atoms. Chlorine being more electronegative than hydrogen will pull the electrons in a little bit more than the hydrogen will. But the, what we're after is understanding the shape, and you can see, of course, anytime you only have two atoms in a, in a molecule, there's only one shape that you could possibly have. It can only be linear. It's kind of like, you now how do you connect two dots on a board? Well, you can only connect them with a straight line, and therefore, a diatomic molecule has to be linear. Now, when we get to a triatomic molecule, they can also be linear, but they can also be bent. So what makes the difference? How do you get a linear molecule and how do you get a bent molecule when you have a triatomic molecule? Well, in the case of carbon dioxide, if we take a look and see what that looks like, this is the Lewis structure of a carbon dioxide molecule. Notice that the carbon in the center, the center atom, has used all of its four available electrons to make bonds. Two with this oxygen, two with this oxygen, so it used all of its four electrons in bonding and has no free electrons available. Now on the oxygen, since they each start with six valence electrons, they use two of those electrons to make the two bonds with the carbon, and of course on the other four electrons will be available, those are called the free electrons, and you have two sets of those. But notice the perfect similarity here, the perfect symmetry between the left and the right side of the molecules. Now of course, these uh, free electrons right here will repel one another, so they want to be as far away from one another as possible, but they also repel the electrons that are used in bonding, so they want to be as far away as possible from these electrons. And it does turn out that the repulsive forces between free electrons is a little bit bigger than the repulsive forces between free electrons and bonded electrons. So the separation of these will be slightly larger than the separation between these two right there. But because of that, the balance of the forces forces the oxygen to be straight out like this, and so therefore it forms a linear molecule. And here I have an example of what that looks like. So here we have the carbon in the middle, and we have an oxygen, uh, yeah, oxygen here and oxygen there. So that's a perfect example of another linear shape, but in this case with three molecules. So what causes 
a situation where you have three molecules and you have a bent shape like that. Now notice that all these three will be in the same plane. We'll talk about planar shapes later. But notice here that you have a bent molecule. Uh, this is uh, obviously water, H2O. And the reason for that is, I have an example right here. Here the, it uh, doesn't work as well as the, the normal uh, molecular shapes that I use, but hey, we'll make it work. So here we have the uh, oxygen in the middle, two hydrogens. They form the bond like this. But then we have what we call the free electron pairs and are represented with these blue little extensions right here. They repel each other, and they also repel the, the electrons used in the bonding cause the molecules to be bent in this particular shape. The angle between the two hydrogens is about 104.5 degrees. So the reason for that is the central molecule, uh, the central atom, I should say, has these three electrons that repel each other. They have no place to go but to then push away the electrons used in the bonding causing this particular shape. Now it's a very important shape in nature and we'll learn more about why that is so important in the water molecule. Anyway, so that gives you a quick start on the basic shapes. Now we're going to go ahead and add additional atoms, more complicated molecules, and figure out why they look the way they do, why they take particular shapes. So, start one, linear, and then we go on to the next one. Also, we're also going to become familiar with a certain notation that we're going to use, and I think I'll put a little video together for that, to learn how we understand the shapes and molecules by using this particular notation. So, stay tuned. See you then.